In this demonstration, we will generate typical class approval drawings using the basic design model created in a previous demonstration. Class approval drawings are often created independently of the ship model. However, ship constructor's marine drafting tools let you automatically create 2D views that are associated with the common 3D model and annotated with industry standard shipbuilding specific symbols. Automatically creating drawings in this way saves time and minimizes the rework required to make a change. To get started, we need to create an output model. An output model can be generated from a combination of sources including model drawings, product hierarchy assemblies, distributed systems, and volume definitions. From this model, we will be creating sets of two-dimensional views to be used to create structural approval drawings. Now that we have defined our output model, we can create a marine drafting drawing. We'll choose the single sheet template to create our midships section. Before we start modeling, we will activate the task. Tasks are a great way of managing and tracking activities in Ship Constructor, and we'll touch more on them in a later demonstration. We can create a view from predefined location groups. So far, we have used these location groups to define structural planar groups and locate stiffeners. We'll create a view of both a watertight and non-watertight section, in this case frames 51 and 56. The update view command generates the view using the layers, line weights, and symbols we have defined in our template. The view we have created is of a frame looking aft. The lines we see outside the view are reference lines generated from location groups. You will see created in our view of symbols for continuous plates, intercoastal plates, and seams. Profiles are represented as a single line along the mold side of the profile with an angle representing an end treatment oriented in the throw direction. Profiles have a symbol of the stock type next to them. Profiles on the forward side of the plate are shown with a solid line type, while profiles on the aft side are represented by a hidden line type. Colors in this case represent different line weights when plotting. Everything you see in this 2D view can be customized to suit a shipyard's desired output. Before we bring our view into paper space for annotation, we'll merge the two views together to show half of the two different frame types. Here you see the drawing sheet, viewports, and the title block defined in our single sheet drawing template. The title block has been pre-filled using keywords associated with model attributes and the file name. We can start annotating the view using Ship Constructor's style-based labels. For class approval drawings, we have created a style called Stock Name for labeling profiles or brackets. Double-clicking on a label lets you make a manual change. In this case, we would like to note that use of this particular profile is typical. We also have a style for plate parts. This shows the plate size on the plate without displaying a leader. Custom labels can be added to reference any of the attributes a part has, such as material name, grade, or manufacturer. We can also create a label using designated marks or a reference table if required. Our view can be dimensioned using AutoCAD's dimensioning tools. This would be all measurements not accounted for by the reference planes. Dimensions can be linear, continuous, or baseline. Once we have created a view, we may need to change parts like profile types or plate thicknesses, and we may need to add details like brackets. We can see a mistake here with the bracket on the non-watertight side. We will fix it and add another bracket on the outboard side in the planar group models. The bracket requiring an update can be modified by moving the handles of the construction lines to the desired location the thickness can be modified in the Edit Properties window. All related parts, including the brackets replicated on other frames, will update automatically. For the new bracket, we can create a non-standard part by drawing in place the outline and defining it as a plate part. This plate part will need to be mirrored about the center line of the ship and then replicated on the other non-watertight frames. We'll now return to our midships section drawing. When we regenerate the view, we can see the bracket and label has updated and the new bracket added. 
Marine drafting views have an intelligent update procedure that remembers and preserves any changes that may have been made to the view. I'll skip ahead, finish annotating this drawing, and we'll take a look at the completed drawing plotted to PDF. We'll now look at creating a multi-sheet drawing showing a two-dimensional view of all the planar groups within a unit. For this example, we'll use our multi-sheet template. Like the midship's drawing, we can create our views from location groups. We'll start with the decks. The views have been set up to be equally spaced in model space. This allows us to have the viewport definitions preset. The views could also be shown in true ship coordinates. Next, we'll create views of the longitudinal sections and the frames also using location groups. Let's look at our views in paper space. Each view can now be annotated and dimensioned using the same methods we used to create the midships section. Here's a look at our multi-sheet drawing when plotted to PDF. As we can see from this demonstration, along with the creation and detailing of our basic design model, a class approval drawing can be easily created from our 3D model. Making changes to the model and updating the view is easier and more efficient than creating a standalone class approval drawing and has the additional advantage of allowing the view to remain linked with the 3D model. For more information, visit www.ssi-corporate.com. Thank you for watching.